Let's go then. Round number four of the Six Nations Championship in what has already been one of the great championships, but could become a classic, depending on how these games this weekend go. Uh, it's a lot at stake for both of the sides that will get things going in Rome, Italy playing Wales. I'm absolutely buzzing for this match. Potential wooden spoon decider. But more than that, Wales in a, in a, in a flux at the minute and in a bit of disarray and trying to get revenge for last year's defeat. Italy resurgent but haven't actually got a win to their name yet. Can they on this occasion? It's going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, I'll be across all of the content this weekend, so please, if you haven't already, hit subscribe. I'm going to be at Twickenham, in fact, on Saturday for England against France. I'll be bringing you some content directly from Twickenham. I'd really appreciate if you hit subscribe. Leave your comments as well. What do you make of these teams? And let's get into it, firstly, with uh, the Italian lineup. One change for Italy, which is enforced, and that is at fullback, where... The little magic rugby pixie, Ange Capuozzo, has, uh, is injured and he's been replaced by Tommy Allen, which you totally understand that selection. You, you, you can't help thinking it's such a shame that Monte Ioani isn't available right now. He will become the World Cup time. He's playing in Australia and that Matteo Minozzi's kind of fallen off a cliff in terms of his form because one of those players coming into the back three and you keep this exciting attacking at Italian play. Tommy Allen, a very different type of player, very reliable for Italy, his 70th cap, it'll be in Rome. Um, so he's he's never let his country down, but he isn't typically a fullback. And that may just change the dynamic of how Italy play a little bit. And if Wales ever were to try and target a fullback with lots of up and unders, this might be the day. Maybe not two weeks ago against maybe the world's best at that particular skill in Freddie Stewart, but Maybe they might drop some bombs on Tommy Allen, I would wager. Uh, they could have put Menoncello back out into the back three and juggled things around there. They did that a couple of games ago. I'm glad Menoncello's in the centre. Really like his combination with Brex. They were an absolute nuisance, that pair. Uh, other than that, the pack unchanged, a pack that performed really well against Ireland and could and probably will cause Wales some problems. Um, yeah, and... You're starting to see a little bit of a confidence and a swagger in Italy. I think the back three situation does hint that there's a bit of depth to be developed. But they've got a really good under-20s team coming through and it won't be long uh, until we see some of those involved as well. So uh, as what about Wales? Well, it's a team, I guess. Warren Gatlin was asked to pick a rugby team and he has picked a rugby team. It just feels like Warren Gatlin's a little bit kind of, I don't know, schizophrenic in the way he's picking rugby teams. He... he doesn't know well clearly Warren Gatlin has no idea what his best 15 is I think everyone might have an opinion I'm looking at the Wales squad and thinking I don't know where to begin because I think you've got this dynamic where the the young players coming through are maybe a bit too raw and the experienced players are now a bit too old and there's not enough people in the middle ground and I guess you've got you've got a dilemma then do you try and squeeze what juice you can out of the experienced players that are still there or do you just use these opportunities just to give some experience hoping that these young guys will be as good as their potential suggests they may be well again Warren Gatland has flip-flopped all over the shop and do you know what I'm going to kind of be think of think of the positive here what have Wales got to lose other than a rugby match and a humiliating wooden spoon potentially I understand that but what have they really got to use the the expectation has never been lower. The prospect of a World Cup seems off off anybody's radar. So what does it really matter what the team is? Warren Gatland is in a, in a position where it doesn't actually matter what, what 15 he selects. Um, really, he can, he can just have a crack. The, the odd picks... Well, there's quite a few big calls in this 15, isn't there? Lewis rees Samit dropped for Rio Dyer. Uh, is a surprise. Is that a defensive selection? Selecting for Rio Dyer's defensive work seems a, seems a hard, seems a strange call on the face of it. Dan Bigger to be dropped from the matchday squad completely, meaning well, who is the backup ten if Owen Williams is injured? Um, well, it's Joe Hawkins then. I know Joe Hawkins was a fly half that was converted to twelve, so he's got experience there not at international level, and he's only just finding his feet at 12. If he has to try and find his feet while playing fly half, that's a really tall order, that. Chris Chunza 
going from starting, and I thought playing well, to being completely out of the match day 23 seems a little bit odd as well. Um, Justin Tipperick staying in the side, Tommy Raphael on the bench, uh, and Christians are out of the match day squad. There's an argument there, but hey, Warren Gatland presumably knows what he's doing. Some positive news, um, Hawkins and Grady, get to continue that centre partnership, which looks promising. Owen Williams is getting another shot. Reese Webb comes in at scrum half, presumably for because of Thomas Williams' poor tactical kicking in the last game. And other than that, what can you say? Daffith Jenkins in at lock. See, this is a Jack Morgan back into the back row. There's, there's so many changes from one game to the next. You just wonder, is, is Warren Gatlin picking his team by a Tom Bowler? Right, lads, we've got a team meeting here. Here we go. Chuck all the names in. Jack Morgan, you're starting this week. It does feel a little bit like that. And for that reason, I'm more... I'm thinking more that there will be an Italian win than I did. I, my thought up until selection was Wales will win. I still think they will edge it. Wales will win. They'll be hurting still from last year. And they'll, they'll have had two weeks in camp now to iron out some of the issues I think they've got a lot of class in that team. When you look at names like Liam Williams and Taolupe Falatao, Tipperick, they've got a lot of class names. Ken Owens, Adam Beard. But these names that need to deliver on the reputation. And if they do, they'll be all right. As for a combined team, let's have a look then. If you had access to all of the players, who would you pick? What do you make of this? Leave your comments. I've gone for a largely Italian pack. This is based on what I've seen in the Six Nations so far now. Fischetti, I really like at Loosehead. Uh, the Canoni brothers have been brilliant. And Adam Beard, you know, British and Irish Lion only a couple of years ago, just looks really passive right now. And whereas Rutzer and Canoni are throwing themselves around and around. And Lorenzo Canoni has looked like an awesome number eight. I can't believe I've selected him above Taolupe Falatao. Uh, Taolupe Falatao, we need to see the kind of game that we know he can deliver. Lamaro and Negri, that's a class back row. So look, look at the, look at that for Italy. I think the hope for Wales is that their back line, even with Italians, especially without Ange Capuozzo, Wales' back line is still more dangerous and more threatening than Italy's, I believe. And the big bonus for Wales is if, if it is a close game going into the last 20 minutes, then six out of the seven names on the bench I have picked from Wales, and I think that could be huge. This is where I think the game could well be won for Wales. It will be close. I'm saying Wales by four points, and they will get that win. They will seal that win in the last 20 minutes when the likes of Rafael, Thomas Williams, uh, Lewis Rees, Samet, and George North are introduced to the game. What a match. Cannot wait. What do you make of what Gatlin's up to? Can Italy pull off this, well, I was going to say upset. Maybe it wouldn't be such an upset. And that's a great thing for the tournament. I'll see you on the next video.